Hey guys, welcome to this video on Venus conjunct Uranus. I'm Cassandra the Saffron Sage, helping you use astrology to evolve. And today we're talking about this transit, Venus conjunct Uranus. So we're going to talk all about what this means and uh, let's get into it. So we can see this is going to be happening on 6-11, June 11th, that is Saturday at on my computer or on my program it's looking like it's around 3 p.m um, but that's going to change based on where you are on saturday venus will conjunct uranus uh, at 16 degrees of taurus so uh oftentimes you know first of all to understand a conjunction and how significant it is the first thing we want to do is consider the how often it happens okay so in astrology, if it happens more often, it's considered less significant. If it happens rare, if it's rare, if it never happens in a thousand years, that's a big freaking deal. So uh, Venus travels around in about a year. It's not that it's never that far from the sun. So every year we're going to have Venus conjunct Uranus. So based on the fact that it happens once a year, it's not a life changing transit. But it is significant. Uh, it's significant with the North Node here uh, at the same time as Mercury here in Taurus, um, having just had, you know, the eclipses in the, in these signs this year. This is, to me, it's important enough to, you know, talk about. So we're going to talk about it. So first of all, we want to look at what does Uranus and Taurus mean? Then what does Venus and Taurus mean? What is it? What do they do to each other? So Uranus and Taurus means change. Change to what? Things that Taurus rules. What does Taurus rule? Land, cattle, uh, food, uh, the senses, the sights that we see, the, the the materials, all of the goods and goods that we have, right? Everything that comes on a truck, anything you buy at the store, that's ruled by Taurus. Things like beauty and makeup are also ruled by Taurus. Although I would I would put them as as Libra, um, if I was assigning them to a sign. And then, so Uranus is going to disrupt those things. We've already seen this. Lots of astrologers have been talking about the disruptions that, you know, Uranus and Taurus has brought us, uh, will continue to bring us. Um, so we could see other changes to land during the time that Uranus is in Taurus. Keep in mind, the Uranus transits the sign. It, it takes forever. Years and years and years from now, um, it will still be in Taurus. Um, so you know, Uranus will bring changes. This could be things like earthquakes. This could be things like changing the infrastructure of how like land developments are made. You know, like I think of landscaping and I think of the different, you know, like how they build out different, um, like even in a house, right? How you build out different levels and structures in the scenery of the house, you know, like you have raised beds or whatever. Um, I think of that, you know, with Uranus and Taurus, I think of the way that we divide plots of land could change. Um, new innovations and in technology could come in when it comes to those type of things. We can also have, okay, this is where we see like the Beyond Burger, right? Because technology, Uranus rules technology, technology in terms of food. So I would expect we're going to see more of this, a lot more of this, a lot more stuff that's like um, lab made food, um, that kind of stuff. Um, turn it, Taurus, sorry, Taurus also rules like the markets as far as money, right? So this is why so many astrologers talk about like cryptocurrency and the changes to um, our money being going online. I definitely see that as happening. I'm not happy about that personally, but um, I do see that as an inevitable change where uh, there will no, no longer be paper money by the time Uranus is out of Taurus. That all being said, now we look at what does Venus rule? Well, Venus rules um, what makes us feel okay. Venus rules some other things I forgot to mention here, such as money, our social life, our ability to harmonize um, in terms of socially or in terms of relationships. Uh, it is things that make us feel good, things like pleasure. So whenever Venus and Uranus are in a connection, this is kind of a shock. This is kind of a, an abrupt change to something maybe that we depended on 
that that um, is sensual. So that can be again a change to our food supply. It can be a change to, I don't know. Now now perfume is no longer available, or you know something else like that that we really enjoy. Um, there's a change where now no more no more live music anymore, or or you know some or you know sometimes Uranus can turn things on just as much as it can be like an on, it's like an on and off switch. So it can be like oh now we have more live music than we ever had before. Now we have some different kind of, again, music, some different kind of um, things that that are involved in personal care, like um, lotions and, and cosmetics and things. You know, now we have some kind of new, really soothing, beautiful, um, maybe like electric, you know, like I think of like... Um, how people will turn on the TV at, at like a nature landscape, something like that, where it's there's more new kinds of technology for something like that, where it's like um, it brings the outdoors into your home or something like that. I don't know why that's what I'm getting, but but basically for all of us, what does this mean? Uranus conjunct Venus. Well, we need to consider first and foremost what house this lands in in our natal chart. And then we need to look at, um, you know, where, what, what Venus and Uranus rule. So in this video, I'm going to go through that for each rising sign in terms of what you can expect. But basically, I think that, you know, Uranus being so close to the North Node, this is going to, um, it's going to conjunct in uh, August. I will be doing another video on that because Mars will be with it. And that's a really huge deal. Huge freaking deal. So you know, just looking at this aspect here, Uranus conjunct Venus. Venus is how we receive, how we receive love. Some people could have a sudden change to their love life or their financial life at this time or their social life. So again, this can be big scale or small scale. It can be like you meet a new friend at this time. It can be that you just have a great conversation with someone and you socialize during this day. Um, good day to, to socialize, but keep in mind, Uranus is unpredictable, so we actually don't know whether we're going to socialize and it's going to be like a sudden, amazing, mind-blowing conversation that's soothing and comforting, or whether it's going to be a fight <laughs> because Uranus can go one, it can change. It'll just like sudden changes we weren't expecting uh, in these areas. So let's go ahead and just break it down for each rising sign. So for Aries rising, this is happening in your second house of money. Uh, and, you know, Venus rules your second house of money and your seventh house of partnership. So definitely something can happen for Aries and Aries rising that has to do with money coming in, um, especially being that seventh ruler in the second. This can have to do with money relating to a partner. It can also have to do with self-worth and values and relationship all tied into one. So this can be changes to relationship status for Aries. This can be um, sudden attractions. This can be uh, sudden opportunities to build skills or do things that make you feel more valuable as a person. You can also be upping your own, like your image. You know what I mean? Like you could get a haircut or like get a facial or do something else that makes you feel more valuable in terms of aesthetically, something that changes your appearance. Um, this day. And then, you know, we also want to factor in that Aquarius rules your 11th house. So this, if you are single Aries or Aries rising, this is a great time to meet someone online or meet someone in a group that can become a partner. <laughs> and if you are not single and either way, actually, it can also be a good time to, for some, for some Aries or Aries rising, you could get money. You know, it, this is in your money house. It's a sudden change. Venus, the ruler is there, which makes it more of a, makes me feel like it's more of a positive thing. There's not really any malefics aspecting it here um, to make it not good. Um, so I would definitely say there is potential. There's potential to make money or to get like a, an a electronic payment, you know, uh, something like that, especially because that 11th house rules money we make from the work that we've done. So especially if you're an Aries or Aries rising who has been doing something that it would make sense for you to get a sudden payment or a sudden payout, especially if it's electronically, that could be happening at this time. So for Aries and Aries rising, I do see this as some kind of change, some kind of probably unexpected change to finances, to budgeting, to um, ways of making money, something like that. Um, so again, everyone's natal chart is different. We don't know whether this will be good or bad, but we know it's unexpected and unpredictable because that's what Uranus does. So moving on now to Taurus. 
For Taurus, this is happening in your first house of identity. So, you know, the first thing that jumps out here is possibility of changing your appearance. Um, if somebody, if a Taurus, Taurus rising is getting plastic surgery, this might be a time you would do that. You might be wanting to just like get new makeup or do your hair differently. Or if you're a guy, you know, whatever guys do to look better, right? Like shave your beard in a different way or, you know, whatever applies to you. And, um, you know, Venus rules your first house of identity. It also rules your sixth house of like daily habits or daily work. So you could have a change to what you're doing every day in your daily work. Um, and then Aquarius rules your 10th house. So this does feel like changes in career, changes in maybe what your responsibilities are day to day, changes to your job in some way. Now, this doesn't have to be an actual job change. This can be like... Uh, you get new responsibilities at your job or you some like, you know, for some, maybe you're relieved of responsibilities or a responsibility that took time out of your day is now changing in some way. Um, so that's really what I see possible here for Taurus is going to be either you are changing how you look or how you appear or even making changes to your physical body. For some people, it could be moving. Um, if you're moving, it might be because of a job or something. But for the most part, these are more little day-to-day -day things. So moving on now to Gemini. So for Gemini's, this is happening in your uh, 12th house of isolation, spirituality, recovery, okay? And then Venus rules your 12th house. It also rules your 5th house, and it rule, and Aquarius rules your 9th house. So we have 12th, 5th, and 9th here activated. So Venus... Um, ruling that 5th house of fun and creativity and being in that 12th house, some... Gemini's will be taking time out to do more creative things, spending more time, almost like alone time to paint or alone time to, you know, do whatever creative things apply to you, alone time for spirituality. Some of y'all might be going on a retreat because it, it, you know, that ninth house is like a quest for the meaning of life and that's a sudden change in your 12th house. So you might realize something, you might realize something that affects your spirituality, your creativity, your self-expression, or the way that you look, or the way that you feel about how you look. You might be thinking a lot quietly about your appearance. Maybe you you want subconsciously want to change your appearance, but you're not doing it. Um, something along those lines. Uh, other fifth house topics are children. So so some Gemini's who have kids are going to have changes in their kids' lives, big or small. And again, with that ninth house, it's almost like you could decide to take a trip or something because having Venus and Uranus in that 12th house makes it feel like it's something that may not necessarily be totally expressed. You might realize also for some Geminis that you want something in your love life or just your desires that you are now giving yourself the permission to allow yourself to want that maybe you didn't know that you wanted it before. So moving on now to Cancer's. For Cancer, this is happening in your 11th house of groups of friends or professional associations. Venus rules your 11th house and your 4th house, and Aquarius rules your 8th house. So, you know, Venus conjunct Uranus, this is going to combine the topics of home and um, friends with the topic of the 8th house topics of transformation, um, merging with other people, uh, you know, really going deep with people. So it's almost like uh, cancers or cancer risings can maybe meet people where you trust them a little bit more. You could have new levels of trust. You could learn why you don't want to trust a certain person. You could have changes to the people you're hanging out with. You could feel, you could just be like having a day today where you get all dressed up and go out to a new event or meet new people or meet the same people and go do something social, go to a concert or something like that. Um, and you know, that eighth house being involved just makes it more, gives it more depth, gives it more oomph, gives it more power. So that's what I have for Cancers. Moving on now to Leo. For Leo and Leo rising, this is in your 10th house of career. Venus is ruling your 10th house and your third house while Uranus rules that seventh house. So, you know, for Leos and Leo risings, this can be a career change, a change to what you're doing every day. You know, with, with the third house being part of this, this can also be like how you communicate, um, what communication needs to happen in your career or in your role in life. This might change. You might have something change in terms of 
again, like your job, your role in life, maybe you have less to do right now. Maybe you have more to do. Maybe something frees you up. Um, some Leos can have some freedom in their role in life, or, you know, maybe something opens up that wasn't opened up before. And it could be relating to that third house topic of information with Aquarius, you know, your seventh house ruler being present for some, this can be a partner does something that helps you get freedom or, you know, something related to relationships and career. It's like those, those themes are blending for some Leos. You might meet someone who could potentially be a business partner you could work with, or that inspires you in career, you know, like a mentor or a coach, someone who you would work with one-on-one -on -one who could help you reach your goals. That's one way this could show up for others. It's more like you're getting, you're getting that the results of something you've put into your career. And it's like now something changes and you can start to see those things flowing in just depending on what Leo rising you are. So uh, let's move on now to Virgo. For Virgo and Virgo rising, this is in your ninth house of, you know, um, travel, uh, other cultures, the law, the meaning of life. I always have a hard time with the ninth house. There's so many things that go into it. Astrology goes into it as well. Um, you know, going, going on a quest for the meaning of life, anything that, anything, you know, you know, long-term education, stuff like that. So having Venus, the ruler of your second house and your ninth house, they're in the ninth house, conjunct Uranus, the ruler of your sixth house. This is maybe a change to your day-to-day -day routine that, that um, is related to some of those ninth house topics. So it's almost like something you do every day changes and now you don't have to. Perhaps you have some kind of epiphany where you realize more deeply how much you don't need to stay so busy or something like that. This can also be related to money because your second house ruler is hitting Uranus. So, you know, some, some Virgos might be getting money. Others might be having to pay out money for things related to the ninth house, like attorney's fees or, um, some kind of fees associated with other countries. If that's something that you do deal with, right? So if you deal with foreign trade or uh, other cultures or other foreigners in your work, possibly some kind of um, payment, you know, like a payment from overseas could apply, but that's only going to be for people who that makes sense for. Um, other things that can happen here, you know, with that sixth house ruler hitting the second house ruler, this is some kind of change to what you do every day, to how much money you make, you know, opportunities. Now, the thing is, where's your, where's your 10th house ruler? It's actually also in the same sign, Mercury's here in Taurus. So this could be something where it's, it's like there's an opportunity to make more money for some Virgo risings. Um, but for others, money may not be as big of a deal. It may be more about an opportunity to have, have like learn something or take a course, um, that, you know, invest your money into a course that you think is worth learning, you know, that especially something that, uh, isn't necessarily about how to do something, but like the, the bigger theory of it all, because that ninth house is more like long-term education. So like, possibly doing a, a long-term course of some kind or even travel for some Virgos, Virgo risings, you, you know, it's like you're putting your money, you're buying a plane ticket or something. So, um, going on now to Libra, Libra and Libra rising, this is happening in your, uh, ninth, eighth house, eighth house of sex, death, and other people's money. Uh, and that is Venus is ruling your ascendant and also ruling your uh, ninth house, eighth house. And Uranus rules your, where is it? Uh, fifth house here. So we have first house, fifth house, eighth house in the eighth house. Yeah. Libra rising. This can be intimacy. Something changes in your, like the, this would be the most obvious one. Something changes in your level of intimacy or depth of intimacy in a relationship. For some, it might be getting into relationships. Um, usually, I, I, I mean, I, it's possible you could disconnect from an intimate partner. I wouldn't predict that in a general reading. There's too many different possibilities here. But um, you could change, you know, an identity shift that relates to fun, creativity, um, dating or intimacy. Most people, you know, the, the easiest delineation here is a breakup or a, a getting together, a coupling. Now, I guess for some infidelity could be potentially a part of this. Not everyone. 
Okay, not everyone, but that eighth house is like trust issues. It's transformation. Um, some Libra risings could have some kind of like aha moment. You can, this could be mediumship, right? Uh, it could be a message from the other side about yourself, your identity, who you are, or about messages from the other side because it's in the eighth house. Um, this could be a an, another change relating to the eighth house topics like inheritance or um, a, a, your partner's money could change. You know, that's another way this could show up. And it relates to your identity, who you feel like you are, how you define yourself as a person, or perhaps even your body or your appearance in some way. So uh, there's lots of possible things that could happen because of this, just because of the houses that it involves. So, you know, it could be who you feel like you are, your identity, just a bigger life change. It can be your own trust or intimacy with someone. It can be investing, you know, money from investments. It could be um, doing more things that are fun, you know, being able to invest in something that is, is entertainment or something like that. Or um, for some children could be a topic as well that that is somehow, you know, something probably positive or some kind of um, harmonious ease, some change that brings a little bit of ease to your children or a change that Venus somehow makes it a little bit better, even if it's a difficult change. So moving on now to Scorpio, Scorpio and Scorpio rising. This is happening in your seventh house of partnership. Uh, Venus rules your, let's see, your 12th house of isolation and your seventh house of partnership and Aquarius rules your fourth house. Um, so this could be a change to your relationships based like changes that a factor in relationship and home. So like moving in with someone, moving out of someone, a change that relates to somebody else, you know, getting a roommate, getting rid of a roommate. Those are some potentials here, but it could also be like some kind of change in your relationship status or with the people you're connected to that, that also brings in the theme of, isolation in a, probably in a positive way. So it's almost like I have more time to myself now because I'm not in this roommate situation, right? Like, like I have more free time because I don't have to talk to a roommate all the time or vice versa, where I have less free time because I get to socialize with roommates, new roommates or something. Uh, it could also be, um, what, what else here? some kind of change to your family of origin, but it somehow, you know, it affects your seventh house of who you are connected to, um, who you are with. And it feels, you know, that Venus feels like it makes it better. Even if it is a disconnected thing, it's almost like disconnecting to get some peace of mind, to connect more to yourself, to have more solitude or something along those lines. So we're going to move on now to Sagittarius. Okay, so on to Sagittarius. For Sagittarius, this is happening in your sixth house of your daily routine, what you do day to day. Uh, and then Venus rules your sixth house as well as your 11th house. Uranus rules your third house. So we have your day to day life, some kind of change, possibly from your environment that, that changes what you do every single day. So it's almost like with Saturn here in the third, it's possible something changes where you can't um, run errands the same way as you used to, or, you know, the thing you always go to is only open, you know, is open shorter hours or something like that. Something like that, where some kind of restriction to it, your communication or your, um, how busy you are, you know, somehow connects with what you're doing every single day. But the 11th house makes me feel like there's something maybe good happening from a friendship or, some, or you know, some Sagittarius, you disconnect from a group of people, a network that you were a part of, and now it changes how you go out your day, go throughout your day-to-day -day routine. Some might be like doing this intentionally, like you join a networking program or you join a mastermind or you join a professional association related to your field. And now you have a change to your schedule as a result, because like now you're doing that a certain amount of the hours of the week or something, you know, for others, it can be with Saturn in the third. I feel like for some Sagis here, it might be like, again, something in your local environment that you normally frequent is closing or um, no longer available and then you have to kind of adjust your routine unexpectedly but Venus there makes me feel like perhaps friends could make this better 
Although usually, you know, the sixth house does tend to sometimes indicate loss. So you could lose a friend that you used to be friends with. You could disconnect with somebody that you know from a group that somehow, you know, no longer wants to connect or in, in any way. And that somehow makes your routine change as well. Um, so a routine change. Now, for some Sages, this might be a health routine change where it's like going to the gym more. And because you're going to the gym more, you have less time to run your errands. Like, and you have to figure out how to fit that in, that kind of thing. For others, it can be um, even like changing your diet or changing other routines like that. You know, what you do from when you wake up, it can be your work schedule changes. Now, for some, this could be because of money that you get from the work that you do allows you some kind of change in your schedule that you was unexpected. So I'm not going to say that's for everyone, only some people. That's only going to be for some people. Um, I don't know what your individual charts are, but that's what I see for Sagittarius. Now moving on to Capricorn. For Capricorns, this is happening in your fifth house of fun, entertainment, and children. So you could have a change to the life of your kids. You could have a change to how much you are getting out and doing things that are fun, how much you are watching movies and going to concerts and doing whatever it is you do for entertainment. There could also be a change for Capricorns to your creative self-expression at this time. And Venus is the ruler of your fifth house as well as your 10th house while Uranus rules your second house of money. So we have the fun house, the entertainment house, then we have the work house, and the money house. So, you know, for some for some Capricorns, this could be a change to money, but it's more like the topic of money is connected to work and fun. So maybe some Capricorns have to do some work socializing, like go to some work parties or something like that. For others, it could be that having you're infusing more fun into the work that you do and the money that you make. Um, you know, Venus tends to make things better. So having it conjunct the, your money planet, um, you know, I would see this as probably a positive thing. Although you do have Saturn in your money house, making it, you know, maybe it's like a good thing among a bunch of challenging things, you know, a little good thing <laughs> uh, because Saturn's there. So it's like a little good financial thing, a little bonus from work and you go get to have fun with it or something. Other ways this could show up for Capricorns, this could be like, again, something changes with your children and maybe somehow that that affects your, your money house and your work house. Like um, something happens with your kids, now you have less time to work or, you know, you have to figure it out somehow. Moving on now to Aquarius. Uh, okay, so Venus rules your fourth house and your ninth house, and uh, Uranus rules your first house of identity. So this is going to connect the themes of home, uh, identity, and belief systems all in one place. So for, you know, Uranus conjuncting your ninth house ruler, this can be a change to what you believe, a change to your belief system, some kind of shift in your worldview that's kind of sudden, like you suddenly realize something that uh, somehow has to do with the topic of home or feeling at home in your own skin. Uh, with, with it being Venus, it's almost like you could realize that you're worth more than something or like realize your value in some way that that's one way that could show up. Uh, you could also have, you know, your identity and your home somehow fused together. So it's almost like whatever's happening in your home could be affecting you psychologically or your physical body more. Um, so for some, it could be feeling limited around the home you have and, and that limiting how you feel like you can be in the world. And for others, it can be the other way where something related to the topic of home sort of uh, allows a little bit more freedom in your personality. Um, for others, this could also be a change to something related to your family of origin that connects to your own faith, your own belief systems. Now, because the ninth house ruler is involved, this could be many, many other things like the law or publishing or um, travel, you know, going abroad, planning a trip, go going away from home, getting back from home. Some, some of those things could be coming up also for Aquarius. And last but definitely not least, we are going to Pisces. So for Pisces, this is happening in your third house of communication. 
siblings long or short distance trips you know like the errands you run every day the the short repeated communication you have the people you talk to on a regular basis having uranus here you know uranus rules your 12th house of isolation spirituality the subconscious mind um, the things we don't see about ourselves venus ruling your third house and your eighth house um, so again this can be a sudden change in communication you're busier, you need to talk to more people. You're less busy, you don't have to talk to as many people. Affecting that 12th house makes me feel like it's going to either speed things up and you'll have to do a lot more, or it's gonna affect your level of peace and quiet. And like now that you don't have to talk to as many people, now you get to relax, or now you get to meditate, or now you get some of that time to contemplate that perhaps you didn't have before. Now your eighth house being involved, for some this may connect to your partner's money if you have a significant other, there could be a change to their income, um, but it doesn't show up as really having to do with your money. So that's very interesting where like they could get a raise or they could get a demotion, but it's almost like it doesn't, it doesn't phase you or it doesn't, the, the money doesn't look like it's coming to you. Um, it could also be, you know, sometimes Things that transit the third house make us really busy. It could also be a focus on education or speaking or um, uh, communicating, writing, especially if it's the kind of writing that you do a little bit every day, like, you know, like people who write posts on social media versus someone who writes a book. Um, so there can be some kind of change to that area of life for Pisces that maybe you're learning how to write more in depth, write in a way that really grabs people with that um, Venus conjunct Uranus and Venus being the ruler of your eighth house of transformation. Some, some Pisces could deal with topics of the eighth house, such as, um, you know, uh, like mediumship. Uh, some will be connected to things such as, uh, inheritances, taxes. Um, why can't I think accounting? Um, you know, other people's money, uh, ways that you could get other people's money usually. Ways that other people's money could come to you. But with it, with it in the third house, it's almost like if that's a, if that's a theme for, for the Pisces watching this, like inheritance or something, then the, the Venus Uranus doesn't feel like this is the day you get the money. And this feels like this is the day that you start signing the contracts and go over the agreements or some other kind of thing where you're looking into tax law or doing some of those little kind of annoying things that, you know, the little fine print, reading all the little fine print, reading all the little details for something connected to some kind of financial, um, things, some kind of interest, you know, stuff like that. Uh, other things that could possibly be showing up here with the 12th ruler conjunct the third ruler and the eighth ruler. Um, you know, to me, that 12th ruler and third ruler, that 12th ruler and third ruler can really bring up situations involving your ability to get peace of mind. So that might be something one way or the other that is affected by this transit. And that is what I have for Pisces. So thank you all for watching. Um, just as always, you know, comment below. Let me know how it resonates. I always love hearing from you. And you can also join us on Fridays for our weekly live where I do live readings. You can PayPal and Venmo me, PayPal or Venmo me. And I do live readings right on the spot. It's tons of fun. Thank you for all your comments. They help my channel grow so much. So thank you, thank you, thank you for those of you who've been leaving comments on the videos. So that's what I have for this video. As always, you can always book a private reading using the link below, and I will see you all in the next video.